What's up, everybody? Sammy here, your host of the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast. So thankful to be back for another episode. I'm here with you guys today talking about Instagram stories. If you're home and maybe have a little bit of extra time, now might be a great time to share what you're doing, what you're up to, what your business is up to on Insta stories and kind of jump in and and kind of take that plunge. Um, And so I'm thrilled to have Nicole Bernard here with me today to talk to you a little bit about Insta stories, how to create content, and why now is just as good a time as any to start sharing those little pieces of you and your business with your audience and, and growing your audience. Nicole started her first entrepreneurial journey in 2007 with her husband when they decided to start an organic farm and microbrewery in the Cascade Mountains of the Pacific Northwest. During the seven years that they ran Acadian Farms and Brewery, Nicole was in charge of all things marketing, everything from events to social media to website design. Learning and doing everything on her own, she created an SEO-friendly website that reached number one on Google and utilized the power of social media and influencer outreach to get featured on prominent publications. After closing the doors due to creating too much traffic, literally, she wanted to take what she learned from the experience and help other small businesses. She spent the next few years working at digital marketing agencies and expanded her marketing chops by learning the systems, tools, and strategies implemented by agencies to achieve massive growth. And that's what she's sharing with you today. Knowledge from both sides. She truly wished there had been a step-by-step strategy to follow when she was growing her business, but there wasn't one until now. So I think you'll love the conversation that we have where we just talk about lots of different ways you can utilize Insta stories. And I would love your Instagram link so I can follow along and learn a little bit more about you and your business. But before we get into it, This episode is brought to you by our digital marketing therapy sessions, which are now available free through the month of April. We may extend it a little bit. We'll have to see. But head on over to the firstclick.net forward slash office hours to book your free 30-minute session with us before um, they aren't free anymore. We can talk about whatever you want from social media to your website to um, should you be selling, what types of things should you be talking about, should you not be talking about. So hit us up at the firstclick.net forward slash office hours. And um, I'd love to get to get to see you. Let's get into it. You're listening to the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, Sammy Bedell Mulhern. And each week, I bring you tips from myself and other experts, as well as hot seats with small business owners and entrepreneurs to demystify digital marketing and get you on your way to generating more leads and growing your business. Hey, Nicole, thank you so much for joining me on the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited about our conversation. Yeah, and I love talking about Instagram um, and especially Instagram stories because it's something that I talk to with a lot of my clients and students, and it's something that definitely makes them glaze over a little bit, especially Instagram stories. So I think this is going to be a great topic. But before we hop into it, kind of why is Instagram the platform that you love and, and, and why are stories something that you think everyone should be participating in? Yeah. Um, so I love it just because a lot of, you know, um, my ideal customers who I'm trying to reach are on the platform. You know, a lot of small business owners, creatives, things like that, who I'm trying to kind of target. So I think it's a great platform. Um, and it, there's tons of people on there that like, so many different industries. Um, so if people are wondering if they should start it, like I would wonder, you know, like I would start with trying to figure out who you're trying to target first and if they're on Instagram. Um, and then stories is just great because, you know, it, it helps with like the news feed, like when you would see the scrolling up and down that it helps with the reach. Um, and it's just really convenient being up at the top. Um, and so since people, you know, like our attention spans are shorter, it's just, easy to kind of look at stories and kind of whip through and just a great way to stay top of mind. Yeah, I know I've turned on stories when I've just been getting ready and all of a sudden I find myself just like watching them go from person to person to person. Right, I know. You're like, like, what just happened? (laughs) Who is this? I don't even know this person. (laughs) Yes, it's totally easy to get sucked into that for sure. Um, So uh, talk a little bit about um, the difference between the newsfeed and stories and, and maybe a little bit about how people are using the platform differently now than when Instagram first started. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Like, 
stories is getting to be a lot more popular and a lot more important um, as far as like algorithm wise. Um, so they're really trying to push like the emphasis of using stories and using their different little engagement tools within the stories um, to help with the reach on that. Um, but yeah, so if you like, if you're looking at your phone on Instagram and if you were to scroll up and down, that would be your newsfeed. Um, that's usually like, what if, you know, and like if you go to your profile, you see all of your pictures and, you know, laid out on your grid and everything. Um, and so that's great. Like you can kind of come up with your own consistent kind of vibe at, as that like on your newsfeed. And then your stories, they're the ones, the little circles up at the top. Um, and that's where, you know, a lot of people share a little bit more personal information. It's not as polished. It's, you know, a really kind of behind the scenes chance to get to know brands brands and businesses. Um, so it's really nice having both of those aspects to be able to use to grow relationships. But do you feel like if you are on Instagram, then you should be in stories? Otherwise, you're not really using the platform to really reach your audience? Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, the more you use stories, the more it actually helps with your newsfeed reach as well. Um, so you want to use both together. Um, and they're saying too, you know, like the emphasis on the newsfeed, um, like the reach is going down and like you're, they're saying a lot of the different experts that to concentrate actually more on stories, like you don't feel like you have to post in the newsfeed every day, just do it like a few times a week um, and use your hashtags and, and all of that stuff appropriately, but to, to make sure that you do stories um, a few daily if you can. Yeah. So now everybody groaned and they're like, I have no idea what to share <laughs> right. on stories three to four times a day. And how am I going to come up with content? And so that's really what we wanted to jump into today is kind of some, some ways of generating content ideas for your stories. Um, so I want to start with the first objection that I know I get all the time, which is I don't want to show my face or talk direct to camera in stories. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I'm the same way. Like I always tell my clients, I'm like, yeah, you need to get on video. And I mean, I never get on video because <laughs> I just don't like it. But, um, you know, I have done it a few times and it actually is getting less scary the more that I do it. Um, and people don't judge us the way that we feel like they probably do. Like we judge ourselves a lot more, you know? Um, so, you know, maybe just instead of like doing a post about common questions you get at, like asked in your answer, maybe just hop on and do like a short video, you know, explaining it, like just showing that, that like added element of seeing your face and seeing you talk, just, it just really helps strengthen that relationship really. And you can well, always use filters. Filters yeah, will say, help a lot too. <laughs> the eyelash filter, I think is my, I use it all the time. Almost. Every yeah. Time. I know. I think I have one called like Bali or something. And I'm just like, oh yeah, this is, I mean, you can't even see wrinkles. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Filters are definitely your friend. Um, okay. So then Obviously, the direct to camera stuff. And um, the other thing is you can pre record all of that. Like, so let's say maybe you want to do a batch of four or five of those when you're in that mood or you've done your hair and makeup for the week or whatever. I mean, I know I only do my hair and makeup on days when I know I have to go live um, on camera, like in training sessions or things like that. So I want to maximize that time when I've gotten ready. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of batch that content too, right? And share it over the course of multiple days or weeks. Definitely. Yeah. And that would be such a great idea. Um, cause being able to batch all your content like that, you know, just really kind of gives you like a, a leg up on, you know, knowing what your content is going to be coming, you know, through the pipeline. So, you know, that's, that's perfect. Um, and you, it'll just stay on your phone and you can just share it when, when you're ready. And I think, um, the last thing I'll say about direct to camera is your Insta stories only last for 24 hours as opposed to live on Facebook mm -hmm. where it lasts forever. Yeah, definitely. So it, I mean, unless you add it to a highlight and you wanted it to, to stay there for people to be able to see it again, other than that, it's gone in 24 hours. And you know, it, you know, that's the blink of an eye really. <laughs> it's, yeah. So it's a great way to practice doing camera stuff if you're shy. Yeah. Uh, and there's also a way you can do it. You can set it to yourself. Like if you want to just practice it and you see it as you get ready, um, you can just set it to like me only. And so just a great way to just kind of practice and get more comfortable with it. Well, that's a great tip. Okay. So earlier you mentioned some of the features that Instagram has in their stories that they kind of reward you for using, um, you know, like questions and polls and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So what are some of your favorites, um, that you like to use for engagement? 
Yeah. I, so I like doing the polls or the questions. Those are really fun because it just, it's like that added element of people being able to ask questions and kind of, you know, start that relationship. Um, I like the one too, where it's like, you can just slide like a smiley face across, but you can actually um, edit that like emoji in it. So it could just be like a straight heart or, it, you know, it could be like a smiley face, any of those. So adding like editing to make it your own is super fun too. Um, and then just like some of the gifts, like people love gifts, you know, I mean, they're just picking some of the ones that are, go along with what you're talking about in your story. Just, I don't know. That's when you'll get a lot of responses and that's what they like to see too. They want to see people like responding to your stories. Cause that'll, you know, that'll help it show it to more people that they think would be interested in it. Well, and those questions and polls and things are great for market research, right? Definitely. Yeah. Whatever you think, like, so one of my clients is a brewery and, um, they wanted to know, you know, with all of this stuff going on right now, they were like, we don't know what to do. We don't know what people want. We don't really know how to like keep going. We only have like a little window to like walk up, you know, like their pubs closed. And I was like, why don't we ask them? And of course, like people responded, like we want, you know, kids takeaway meals that they could do at home, like a homemade pizza, like all of these things that we would have never thought of, you know, had we not asked them. Well, and that brings up a good point too, because the people that are engaging with you in your stories or just in your newsfeed on Instagram are probably your biggest fans, your most Mm -hmm. loyal. So if they're giving you that feedback, it almost holds more weight than just a general survey that goes out to a bunch of people and maybe they kind of haphazardly fill it out. Yeah, totally. And like, you know, if you send out a survey to like your email list that, you know, some, maybe somebody hasn't even engaged with for a while, like, you know, social media is just a lot more, um, fluid. You know, a lot of people, like if they don't kind of pay attention to your stuff, then they just don't really see it for algorithm wise. So, you know, that these people are, have a vested interest and they're, they're going to tell you, you know, what, what they're thinking. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So then let's talk a little bit about, because obviously you know, Instagram stories has been around for a long time. It will continue to be around for a long time, but we are Mm -hmm. in the midst of COVID-19. I mean, we can't not bring it up. Right. (laughs) Um, And so I know we get a lot of questions about kind of the sensitivity around how to address things or like topics or what's on, like what, what brands can talk about what they shouldn't Um, kind of how, how do you feel about brands showing up on Instagram stories and, and how should that maybe be altered? And I know it depends on the industry. Um, but showing up is still a good thing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think too, you know, people are on social media more. Like, I don't think that they're, they're saying that they're definitely, the usage is up. So they're on there, you know, but like, you know, you might want to think about what you're sharing, you know, like still show up, but you know, a lot of people are just really like, they'll get on there and talk about it too. And they're like, you know, we just want to be here for you guys. I'm going to show pretty pictures or like pictures of puppies in our feed, which you wouldn't normally do, (laughs) but to, you know, just kind of like lighten the mood and like, just like I said, yeah, it's like still showing up and just sharing. And if, you know, you do have things going on, then don't be scared to share them. Like, I think some people do really, we want a sense of normalcy, you know, like to see some of the same normal things that we normally would. Um, but yeah, just, you know, try try and keep it light and and share what you're still doing. Well, and as a business owner, if you've been scared, like maybe you have less time uh, or you have more time because your business (laughs) might not be as busy. Now's a great time to kind of play and experiment with something new that could potentially carry you, you know, maybe it's something you've been thinking about doing for a while. And now's the moment to kind of test and try it out and have some fun with it. Yeah, totally. Um, That's a great idea because I mean, once, you know, you get the hang of it and you get used to doing it, it becomes quicker and easier. You get more comfortable with it. So when things are back to normal, you'll have, you know, like, like a step ahead that you'll already be ready and a little more comfortable. I love it. Okay. So there's some other things. So if if people aren't comfortable with direct to camera, I mean, you did mention a few things like, um, gifts and and things like that. Um, But there's plenty of just text options and, you know, you don't have to be a crazy graphic designer in order to create amazing Instagram stories. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. So even if you just want to, a lot of the ones where people just write out the text and, you know, they'll put like a little one of the engagement tools that says like hold down to read, you know, like you can even share it that way as well. It's just a different way of see like seeing it in the newsfeed. Um, and so you can also put like 
you know, your spin on it, like your brand and everything. Um, and then also to Canva, like, do you use Canva at all? for oh, graphic do, I love design? It. Yeah. It's so easy. Like so user-friendly. Um, so that's like a great option too. They even have templates or, you know, it's just super easy to like upload and make something in just a few minutes and then share that. Okay. So I have, um, yeah, I love Canva. I use it all the time and I have used it for my stories and templates and I love it because I can create. So there was a period of time. I don't do this anymore, but there was a period of time where (laughs) every Monday I was posting like, Hey, here are my three goals that I'm going to get done this week. Like let's hold each other accountable, blah, blah, blah. And I could just reuse that same template in Canva every week. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wanted to just touch base on, um, like with my news feed, I kind of think about core topics and I post, I try to post two to three times a week and I have kind of core things that I think about. So would you also recommend doing like a core, like I have the same things that I do every week and this is like the things that I talk about and this is how I show up. So I might do like a direct to camera free tip and then I might do a question the next day and then I might do a behind the scenes of what's going on in my business. Like, do you recommend people having kind of common themes? Yeah, I do. Um, I think it makes it easier for, you know, us as business owners to have that and to know like going into the week, like what we're going to be talking about, what the strategy is and everything. And I think the, like the engaged, you know, listeners and people of followers, um, they expect that too. And they kind of look forward to it, you know? Um, and you can kind of see too, if you like, if you track your analytics, um, and, kind of just be able to see what they're engaging with. So say they like one of the topics more, um, I wouldn't make it every single time, but maybe you can work some of that more of that content in. Um, so yeah, just kind of keeping track of what they're engaging with, um, is, is great too. Like that's just great knowledge to have. Yeah. And analytics in Instagram is not necessarily the easiest to pull. No, it's really not. And they only do it week by week, which is right. kind of annoying. <laughs> so unless you have a third Instagram party. if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If Instagram is listening to my podcast, then I'm feeling pretty, uh, pretty darn good about myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, not to say my podcast isn't amazing, but you know. Anyway, yeah, no, I know uh, what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you're using a third party tool, like there's some of those that offer longer tracking, but I, I mean, I guess I don't. So I don't know if there's any that, um, track your Instagram stories or not. Yeah. Um, I think later.com does. Um, and you can also publish, like you can schedule out your stories on later. Yeah. That's for like the paid program, Mm -hmm. um, which is only like, I think 15 a month, like their free version is great. You just can't schedule stories. Um, but give me 15 bucks a month. If, if you find it's, you know, you need it to be able to schedule it. Um, that's a great option too. Okay. So if we've got great content that's being pushed out, um, and we're posting on a regular basis, uh, I think the next kind of step for people to pay attention to is that kind of interaction with the people that are in engaging in your stories. Um, do you have any tips, ideas, or thoughts for the best way for people to kind of stay on top of that? Yeah. So, um, I know, yeah, that's probably one of the biggest pushbacks I get from people as well. They're like, I just don't have time. And I'm like, I promise just maybe like I had to tell them to like set a timer, you know, like 10, 15 minutes in the morning and even afternoon. I'm like, just hop on, you know, like it shows the platform that you're being consistent, that you're engaging. And then it also like helps you. You can just hop on, respond to anything, share things, comment. Um, it's just really good to be able to, you know, you don't want to just keep pushing it out and then not, reciprocate anything. Like it is supposed to be social. It's supposed to be a relationship. So yeah, I tell my clients to like set a few timers throughout the day, whatever's convenient for you and just hop on and engage with those, those people. Yeah. I've done that several times where I've posted a question and then haven't gotten back on Instagram in like 24 hours. Right. And then it was totally wasted because you can't see the responses anymore. You can't engage with their responses. So it's like, well, you, the effort you put in isn't even worth it because you're not taking advantage right. of the responses that your audience gave you. Yeah, totally. And then, yeah, you know, you can screenshot their responses and then share those. So it shows them that, you know, other people are answering and then, yeah, there's like, there's just so many good things to be able to, to share all that information and just be engaged for a little while, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, talk a little bit about DMS and stuff. Like there's so many different ways that you can engage with people in DMs. So whether it's voice or video or whatever, so you could totally be in your comfort zone there too. 
Yeah, totally. I, I get a lot of people that send me the voice DMs. I haven't gotten on board with that. I don't know why. I think it's just because I'm used to typing so much, but God, it, it saves so much time. Um, so yeah, and that's like a whole other element. Like when you can hear someone's voice, I don't know, it just helps as well. You know, so that's saves time and just kind of adds a little bit more to do with the voice DMs or video if you're comfortable with that. That's awesome. Um, okay. So then one other question that I get asked a lot and that I have also thought about is when it comes to growth in your Instagram followers, how does growth with Instagram stories differ from like growth within your Instagram feed? Like you mentioned that they, they work better when paired together. Um, but as far as getting in front of new people is one better than the other? Um, well, no, I, like, again, I would use both. Um, and then being able to use both, um, you can put hashtags, like even on your stories, like, so you can kind of hide them into the background of whatever you're posting about. Um, and so that search tool of the hashtags helps you get found by more people. Um, and then also too, like I was saying, the algorithm just rewards using stories more. And the more that you they see your stories, um, the more that they'll, like push out your reach on your newsfeed. So growing using both, like both of them together would be the best. And then also with like the appropriate hashtags, which also too, if you look, like if you go in your newsfeed and it, it shows like view insights for each post, you can click on that and it'll break down the analytics and it'll tell you how many people found your post just from hashtags. So they're not even followers yet. They just found it and then they engaged with it um, or look or viewed it. So you can really expand your reach and really reach people with like appropriate hashtags in both your stories and your newsfeed. Yeah, that's so good. Okay. So I'm comfortable using stories. I've been doing it for a while and now I want to maybe jump into doing an Instagram live. Mm -hmm. Um, what, how are what are your thoughts on Instagram live? Um, because then that like the live shows up. So if you talk about real estate, right, you've got the newsfeed, you've got the Instagram stories and the lives show up on even before the Instagram stories do at the top. They do. Bar. Yeah, mm -hmm, they do. And again, they only stay for 24 hours too. So, um, if you want to, you know, for whatever reason, like maybe save them, you can put them in the highlights, which is that little area between like the grid and your bio. Um, so if it's like a really good live and you have a lot to share, um, you know, and people can see that interaction too. You can see people jumping on and asking questions, all that. Um, but yeah, live is such a great way because, you know, for that reason, um, people can ask you questions in real time. Um, and so it's just, yeah, it's really great. And then it, like you said, it goes at the top of the stories, like before the stories. So that's really a great tool to use as well. And you can bring people on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can have, I, I don't know if you can bring more than two. I know on Facebook, you can have more than two, but I'm not sure. I'm not positive about Instagram, but yeah, you can at least have one other person hop on yeah. and yeah. Well, and I think, um, the thing that I love about Instagram live is it feels way more like nitty gritty. Like I don't feel the pressure to have the perfect backdrop and the perfect lighting as I maybe do on a Facebook live. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that. Um, and I feel like that's like that stories in general, you know, like it's meant to be a little unpolished and show like the real, real life kind of things, you know, which people love that. And that's probably why it's so popular because people feel like they're seeing like the realness, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to me, that's the biggest, like I hopped off social media for a long time a few months ago and I'm still not even posting all that regularly. Um, I'm working my way up to it, but it was the same thing. Like it felt very much like I was comparing my business to everybody else. And it just mm -hmm. got real heavy. Cause I was like, well, why am I not doing this? And why are my people not commenting here and this, that, and the other. And what I love about stories is it's like, you can throw something out there and ask questions and nobody knows mm -hmm. if anybody's engaging with you or not, you know, but you know, you can just kind of test things and have a little bit more fun with it without it kind of being this public outing of, oh, well, I know how many people engaged with that post compared to mine or whatever, which nobody else even cares anyway, but. Right. Yeah. Nobody, really, yeah. nobody really does. And then actually, so like a few weeks ago, I talked to a few Instagram experts and they were saying that, you know, like the, um, engagement is going way down on the newsfeed, but people are still using it as like a research tool. So say someone hops on like Google, they're trying, they're traveling somewhere and they want to find like a coffee shop in that area. And Google comes up with 
the website. And so they look at the website, but then they, a lot of times they'll hop on over to Instagram and they'll look at their feed. They won't engage with anything. They don't follow them either. So you don't even know that they're coming from there, but people are using both of these tools against each other to try and like make their decisions of what they're going to do or go or eat and stuff like that. So people are wanting multiple resources to validate the choices that they're making. Exactly. Yeah, and Instagram is one of the big ones that they turn to. Well, so. because Instagram is so visual. Yeah. Um, if I want to see what something really looks like, if I can hashtag that, look at the hashtag for that hotel or that restaurant or something, I'm going to see real people's perspective as opposed to the photos that that brand has published. Yeah, totally. Um, okay. So then another piece, if we go back to kind of content generation, sorry, I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but, um, if we go back to content generation, um, like you're saying post, you know, three ish, maybe times a day, um, you can also take relevant content from other people and share it to your feed. So it's not always having to just create new stuff. Like you can find other Mm -hmm. things that are relevant and educational or helpful to your audience and repurpose other people's stuff. Yeah, definitely. Using like uh, user generated content, like a lot of the, like the memes, any inspiration, motivation, you know, things like that. People really um, engage with that. And so, yeah, like you said, you don't have to sit there and think about it all the time, but you know, maybe some of the people that you follow that motivate you or make you laugh or whatever, you know, you can just hit the share button to your stories and it, it just goes straight to the stories and it also credits them. So, you know, it's kind of, it's just a win-win. Yeah. I like to do that with, um, within members of my followers. Like what are some engaging things that they are doing that I could share that show examples of, um, the right way to do it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So also now, just because you mentioned like typing comments and responses is time consuming, but you can also now link up your Instagram and Facebook, right? So that you can respond to direct messages and things like that on the back end of Facebook. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They can talk to each other. Um, and so that saves time too. So if you don't want to, you know, go and post two separate places or respond or anything like that, you can just look, like link them up together. You just have to um, on both ends, link them to the other one. And then they start talking to each other, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And then you can also post your Instagram stories directly to your Facebook business page then at that point, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do that all the time. Um, so yeah, that's just another thing in your settings with, for stories. I think it's in privacy and you just swipe the little Facebook one and then it automatically sends it over there as well. Yeah. And I guess, we, I mean, we weren't anticipating to talk about Facebook stories necessarily, but I mean, do you think it's important to create separate content for both or do you think it's okay to just kind of repurpose and automatically share at this point? I think for stories, I think it's okay. Um, I know like, so for posting wise, I try and change it up a little bit depending on the different platforms. Um, mm. But yeah, I think stories is fine because it really is, you know, again, like we were saying, like kind of behind the scenes, a little nitty gritty, not super polished. So it's also another just place for them to to really get to know you and, and nurture that relationship um, by seeing, you know, all of this other stuff that they wouldn't normally see other places. So, right. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I will watch Instagram stories, but I don't ever touch Facebook stories. I know. I don't really get into them either. And I don't know why. <laughs> like, I guess. I mean, it's just awkward. I just feel like when I look at, cause I don't really, I don't really use Facebook that much on my phone. Um, and so I think the way that it looks on my desktop is just like, it's, it's just awkward. Yeah. It kind of, it's like that big, like box. a rectangle, right? <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. is it trying to look like a cell phone. <laughs> right. It's so yeah, bizarre. I don't know. I think just since my mind got used to doing it in Instagram, I just don't, I haven't, I don't know, done it on Facebook much unless it like happens on accident. <laughs> I'm like, Oh, right. <laughs> but it's still good placement and it's still good opportunity to potentially grab an audience. So automatically yes, sharing is a great yeah. way to create create content. Um, okay. So what else would you say to somebody who's scared or says, I have nothing important to share on Instagram. Nobody's going to care about what I'm saying. Yeah. I get that one a lot. Um, like just in general, like in social media in general, or they're like, I suck at social media. I'm like, well, you you don't, you know, just, you know, people don't really think about the different topics. Um, I don't know. I mean, there's all kinds of things, you know, you could do, you could just, like we said, the user generated, user generated content. Um, if you have any blogs that are like helpful tips, you know, you could pull out one of those tips and and post it on there and, you know, have a call to action to go read it 
at your website, something like that. Um, you could do like, have you ever done or seen people do like the stories takeovers? Those are always fun. Yeah. So you can have like some of your employees or, you know, whoever take over your Instagram and it's just a whole different perspective. Um, and just people really like those and they're enjoyable. Um, well, yeah, and now and don't you think people could even like, let's say you've got a handful of employees that are all working remotely. Like it's a great opportunity to become more personal with your audience and share like, okay, well, this is how our company is working remotely and supporting each other, like tips for that, or just ways that you're still, you know, showing up and, and being there for your customers, even though it looks different. Yeah, totally. Like that, that's a perfect example of how to do it. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, it gets to like, that shows like your culture, you know, your different employees and it just, I don't know, really kind of strengthens that bond that they have with you and why they're, you know, kind of following you and stuff like that. So I think that'd be perfect. Yeah. I mean, we know that people buy from brands that they feel a connection to, even if it's not the cheapest, they still, they want to have that personal connection. And so to me, I feel like right now is that push for a lot, a lot of businesses to show up in a more raw Mm -hmm. fashion. Authentic. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And, and not be so polished. And I think that's the beauty of stories from a branding perspective is you can have your employees all submit something to you and you can go through and review it and make sure it's all good. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like Mm -hmm. a live where you have to worry about what they're going to say. Yeah, totally. Still get something out there that hits your, your target audience. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you know, the other thing too, like one of the other little engagement tools that I love to use is the countdown one. Yes. Um, that's great too. Cause also people can get reminders for when it's coming, you know, whatever it's counting down to. So that's just another great way to just kind of keep that in front of them, even though we all forget, cause there's so much going on. Um, so that's just another one too. I wanted to mention. I love the countdown one. Yeah, I do too. I like the confetti. It's like, poof, yeah, it like, it's like such, you're like, yay. <laughs> I, know. I won something. No, but <laughs> I didn't. Um, you know, which one, and I talked about this literally a podcast ago. So like, you know, I'm clearly very bitter about this, but <laughs> my business account still doesn't have the music feature. Yes. I, mine had it. I didn't have it for the longest time and then they gave it to me and then they took it away and I don't even know why, but yes, I'm quite bitter as well because yeah. like, my personal account has it. I have a couple of their client accounts that have it. Yeah. So if for some reason you hop into stories and you're like, Nicole said this and I don't have it, it's not her fault. Yeah. I don't know why. And I don't even know how to get it back either. And it's like, it said something about an update and I just got a new phone. So I know it's like the latest updated version of Instagram. And yeah, that's super frustrating because that's like super fun. Like that's such an other added element that shows personality as well that I would, yeah, love to be able well, to. Well, and it's interesting <laughs> that they don't have that more widespread because it's also a situation where if you're out and about and there's a bunch of music in the background, you can actually get in trouble for copyright. Oh, okay. So yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So if, if it's through the app, then they have the rights to use that music. But I mean, I've seen people posting Instagram stories and they're like, sorry, I got to move because the music is too loud. And if it's like more than 15 seconds or something, then you could get in trouble for using music that you don't have the rights to. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think that they would just include it then with all of us. So we so can give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. One other thing that I know comes up a lot is people, you see people that are live streaming to Facebook and live streaming to Instagram at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I get a lot of questions about like, well, how are they doing that? <laughs> and it's pretty down and dirty, right? There's not really a seamless way to do that. Yeah. I don't, I have not tried it yet. Um, but yeah, I, I think you have to have like a computer, right. And a phone to do it. Yeah. <laughs> separately at the same time (laughs) and then who do you look at like which one so um yeah but I do think it's cool I mean like when I do watch people do it you can tell they've practiced and they're great at it like I think it's super effective um so I think that would be a great a great option to do both at the same time but I would just even before that just get good at one before trying to do them both you know yeah I need to do more Facebook lives and Instagram lives that's you know It's a perfect time. There's a lot of captive people right now that are looking for something to do. Totally. And I know you can use technology to like, quote unquote, live stream to Facebook, even though it's not live. But I don't think you can do it to Instagram yet. Or I haven't done it. Uh, It's not, it doesn't seem as widely done as Facebook. Do you know anything about that? I've definitely heard about the Facebook (laughs) stuff. I have not heard able to live, like fake live stream to like pre-record. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. I have not heard that for Instagram. I haven't either. But you know, it's only only time okay. somebody will figure it out. <laughs> somebody will. And then they'll get shut down because the right. API will change. <laughs> I think um, it's it's been really interesting for me because like I said, I took a break from social media for like three or four months from like November to, I don't know, I'm still kind of on a quasi break. And just in that period of time, I feel like things have changed and I'm way behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and I share that because I don't, I think it's all in my head. I just haven't been using it. So I guess my thing is just start doing something with stories. Even if you just do it once a day for, or once every other day or a couple times a week, um, but just start doing something. Yeah, I agree. And just, yeah, I like anything, just try it. Like, you know, again, set your timer to engage. And then maybe at that same time, do something with a story. And if you're not, you know, comfortable doing the video, um, then just, you know, share somebody else's that you liked or, you know, share like your latest post that was about a blog or something. Um, so just start simple. Um, and just, yeah, keep, keep building on it. Um, and sharing, but although I will say this and hopefully people don't do this, but like, (laughs) or get offended. But like, if I go on someone's stories and there's like 60 little things up the top, I'm like, Mm -hmm. uh, -uh, I don't have no, like you lose me by like number five. And then I just, get to the next one. Well, and that brings up a good point too, though. So Facebook or sorry, Instagram favors like recency matters, right? Like the time that you're posting within your audience, uh, when your audience is engaging. So it matters what time of day you post. And then, like you said, if you're, if you're posting a couple times a day, make sure they're not all like chunked together so that people can get a little bit here and there. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like do a, you know, one in the morning, one afternoon, night or something just not like 20 all at once because then it, yeah, it's a lot of like timing issues. And then also people just, we like to sit there and watch stories, but uh, you know, the, I've heard a lot of people talking about the overcrowdingness of it now on just, you know, a single person's account. So you don't want to do that either, you know? Um, so. I, I agree with that hundred percent. I don't really want to see every single thing that you did today. Right. Exactly. I just want to know some, not all. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, did you find a weird shape in your toast? I want to see that, but I don't want to know what kind of toothpaste you use to brush your teeth. Yeah, totally. And that's, you know, like we're talking about, you know, people are like, well, what should I post when people care about this? Like, I mean, you know, to an extent, like you want to share yourself and your business and your employees and things like that. And it, it's not super polished, but then you don't, yeah, like you said, you don't want to share every single detail. <laughs> Right. Like I posted something the other day that was me and the kids sitting outside because I'm homeschooling right now. And so I just posted a quick picture and I got a lot of comments back to me about that because we're all, a lot of us are all in the same boat. We're all doing our homeschool thing, but, um, I'm not going to do that every single day and be like, cause that's not who my brand is, right? Like I'm not a right. teacher. Uh, well, I'm not a school teacher. Um, and so I might share a few things here and there just to be real and show mm-hmm. that like, you know, I'm a human being and we're struggling with this, just like a lot of you are and how can we support each other, but that's not going to take over my feed yeah. um, as, as who I am. Like I still want the bulk of what I do to be marketing tips, website stuff and all that good stuff. So it's important to have that balance, right? Yes, totally. Totally. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, I think you shared a lot of great ideas um, and hopefully people will get inspired to get started. And hopefully you guys will hit us up and let us know that you've started so we can follow you and see, check out your stories. Um, But any last kind of words of wisdom for um, hopping into Insta stories? Um, Not that I can think of. I feel like we went over all of it, but um, yeah, like I love what you said, you know, and just this goes with anything, just get started, you know, just try a little bit here and there and you'll get more comfortable to get less scary. And then eventually you'll look back and be like, Oh God, look how far I've come. So, well, and remember that on Instagram, you don't have to do all the crazy dances like they're doing on TikTok. So it's way easier. I have not even like, I've watched them, but I'm not on TikTok and I have no idea how it works, but it's hilarious. Some of the stuff that people are putting out there. I have to tell you just, and then we'll wrap this up, but I um, have a 12 year old daughter who of course is on TikTok, And so she's roped us into it and we have our own separate podcast that we're going to start bringing back shortly. And so we have, a, we have a TikTok for that podcast and I pride myself on being a, t- you know, so techie and up to date on things. I can't like, I look at the TikTok. I'm like, I don't even know. She has to do it for me. I'm like, and now I'm officially <laughs> getting to the point where my kids are out checking me, but you know, it's um, crazy how that happens. Like my daughter's nine and she like her cousin had showed her Snapchat 
and this was like when Snapchat was all the rage like two years ago. And I was like, how do you even do a filter? Yeah. And she was like, <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. I know. Anyway, Nicole, thank you so much for your time. If people want to find out more about you and how to interact with you or learn from you, how, how do they do that? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well, Instagram. Um, <laughs> and it's just um, nb.mktg. So like whatever marketing would be short. Um, and then my website is nb.marketing. Um, awesome. So yeah, this has been so much fun. I've had a, yeah. a blast. It's awesome. And we will um, link all of that up in the show notes. So you guys can head on over to the first click.net forward slash podcast and get all the show notes for this episode. I'll link up some of the resources for some of the things we talked about today. Um, but get on Instagram stories. It's fun. Yeah. yeah get started. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Nicole. Yeah. Thank you. Huge shout out again and big thank you to Nicole for joining me on this episode. If you want more information or links to any of the resources that we talked about this episode, please head on over to the show notes at the firstclick.net forward slash podcast. You can also check out any of the other amazing episodes that we've talked about. We do have some other social media platform things that we've shared um, and just subscribe wherever you listen. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.